What would happen if we left pigs on a low gravity, high oxygen planet and allowed evolution to run its course over millions of years? What types of life could evolution give rise to? This is what happened on the planet of Jotunheim, a seed world inspired by the turtle world of Kappa and the bird world of Serena. The main species that we'll focus on is pigs. I think that pigs are a very underrated animal. They are often seen as dirty and looked down upon. But these creatures are highly adaptable. They are omnivores, which means that they can eat a variety of foods of both plant and animal origin. Their sense of smell is as good as a dog's and maybe even better. They are highly intelligent and social animals, and they have the capability to evolve into a diverse range of species. For seed world projects, it's usually not explained how the species got introduced, but that's what I want to start with. The events of Jotunheim takes place several millennia in the future, where space exploration and colonization are beginning to accelerate. Humanity has already spread to hundreds of solar systems in our local part of the Milky Way. Colonies are being set up on habitable planets and moons, which are much more common than we once thought. And microbial life has been found to be widespread. All planets and moons that have the conditions for life to exist seems to have life present. But no complex multicellular life has been discovered, only bacterial life. But the original excitement that came when alien life was first discovered quickly faded as a peculiar aspect of this discovery became obvious. All known life is biochemically too similar to have originated separately. Therefore, all known life must share the same origin and somehow have spread throughout the Milky Way. It is not understood how this has happened, but it will turn out to be a mystery that will hold the key to understanding one of the most fundamental questions of our existence. Why are we here? The presence of biochemically identical life to us is a huge advantage for space colonization. Not only is the life on inhabited exoplanets and exomoons compatible with Earth-based life, allowing worlds to be terraformed and seeded easily, but on many worlds, cyanobacteria-like organisms have evolved, producing oxygen that have formed protective ozone layers. On most planets, the levels of oxygen are sufficient for humans to breathe, allowing for easy establishment of new colonies, eliminating the need for protective bodysuits, or building enclosed structures. So many worlds exist that are just ready to be landed on and settled. One of those planets is the world of Jotunheim. It is a rocky planet that orbits a yellow star. It is about 3 billion years old, and it is a bit smaller and lighter than Earth, and has a gravity that's roughly 70% that of Earth. The planet is located a few hundred light years away, and has an atmosphere that is similar to Earth's, except that it has a much higher concentration of oxygen, around 35%, compared to 21% on Earth, which have been produced by the cyanobacteria in Jotunheim's oceans. It orbits slightly farther from its star than Earth does, making it a cooler, temperate world. It has two major continents and several smaller landmasses. The planet was named Jotunheim, meaning the home of the giants in Norse mythology, after a giant mountain range on its largest continent. The first spaceship carrying a few hundred human settlers established a colony in the warm equatorial region. They introduced small soil organisms, like earthworms and fungi, to create a functional farming ecosystem. Domesticated animals and plants were introduced for food, along with a variety of tree species and symbiotic fungi for timber production. But within a generation, the human colonists suddenly disappeared. It seems like they disappeared from one day to the next. It is for now unknown how or why that they disappeared. And it will be one of the great mysteries that future scientists will dedicate their lives to solving. The period following the disappearance of humans on Jotunheim is called the Eocene Age and lasts roughly 100,000 years. The plants and trees that the settlers brought rapidly spread across the largest continent, called Ymir, creating forests and other types of familiar ecosystems. Winds and ocean currents help the vegetation reach other continents and islands. And within 20,000 years, most of Jotunheim is covered in vegetation. The planet's unique conditions soon begin reshaping its biology. The low gravity means that plants spend less energy on structural support, allowing them to grow larger than anything on Earth. In forest regions, a fierce evolutionary arms race pushes trees to grow taller to reach the sunlight. 
giving rise to towering giants that dwarf the redwoods that we find on Earth. On the animal side, almost all of the domesticated animals that were brought to Jotunheim perished in their enclosures when humans vanished. But a small group of pigs escaped into the wild, and this humble group will go on to form one of the main lineages of life on Jotunheim, from which some of the planet's most extraordinary creatures will evolve. Over the next tens of thousands of years, as vegetation spread and food becomes abundant, the pigs multiply rapidly. With no predators to keep them in check, the pig population explodes, growing to a collapsing point where the available food couldn't sustain them anymore. This resulted in a dramatic population decrease, where different pig groups started adapting separate strategies to survive the collapse. One adaption to resource scarcity and to a world without predators is dwarfism. Smaller bodies require less energy, and without the need for defense, size becomes a disadvantage. This happens to one group of pigs, which have also become small to preserve energy, resembling the miniature pigs once bred by humans. This group eventually becomes a distinct species, the Eosian Pygmy Pig, and will emerge as one of the dominant lineages of Jotunheim's future fauna. Pigs are omnivores and can even resort to cannibalism, and another lineage took this behavior even further during the population collapse. They began targeting the sick and the weak for food, and later birthing sows and their newborn piglets. Normally, female pigs isolate themselves to give birth, building small nests of vegetation where their young can stay safe and warm. But in solitude, they become vulnerable to predation. Natural selection strongly favored this hunting behavior, and disfavored any behavior diminishing it such as mating or grouping with pigs showing non-hunting behavior. This population quickly became reproductively isolated. And over thousands of generations, behavioral adaption became biological change. They evolved predatory features such as sharper and heavier teeth, stronger jaws, and a growing appetite for flesh. Eventually, the cannibals became carnivores, giving rise to the first carnivorous species on Jotunheim, the blood bowl. This species is the second major lineage of pig life on Jotunheim. The human settlers also brought bees as pollinators for their crops. These insects will form the second major branch of animal life on Jotunheim. On Earth, insect site is influenced by atmospheric oxygen. Around 300 million years ago, insects reached gigantic sizes on Earth, as oxygen levels were around 35%, compared to 21% today. With similar oxygen levels to prehistoric Earth and a lower gravity, the descendants of Jotunheim's bees will evolve into magnificent beings. But for now, they remain largely unchanged, spreading across Ymir, alongside the flowering plants that they pollinate. As the Eocene Age comes to an end, we enter the Hyrian Age, the Age of the Pig, where the low gravity and high oxygen levels of Jotunheim will give rise to creatures unlike anything we know from Earth, which is what we will cover in the next episode.